Hi, today we're going to be looking at this one up arcade machine. Now, I purchased this from eBay for spares or repair, and I paid, I think it was £46 for it. It was on an auction, so I won it for £46. And it was a company called Geekies in Sunderland that was selling it. I think they do computer repairs. Now, the fault is there's something wrong with the controls, or that's what they said. So I think what we'll do, we'll power it up, we'll see what it does, and then we'll see if we can repair it. Right, so I'll switch it on with the control panel here. And it's rather grubby and the control panel is well worn. So the first thing I've noticed is it comes up with this test mode. And it says test mode A, tested one, pass zero, fail one. So, but then it does eventually load up. I have, it, have had it on a couple of occasions where it hasn't loaded this far and it's just stuck on that uh, test screen. So I'm not sure what the problem is. Somebody's had a look at it before because there's no screws in this panel here. That's just loose. And there's supposed to be a plastic cover. Let's tip this over here. There's supposed to be a plastic cover over these controls, which is, you can see that, just lying in the bottom here. And there's also screws missing from the back of the unit as well. So the back's not attached. So I had to drive to Sunderland to pick this up, so shout out to everybody in Sunderland there because I know there's a few viewers from Sunderland watch the channel. So I'll show you what it does then. So it says there, press play, I want to continue. But if you press any button, it seems to start. If you move the joystick, nothing seems to happen. Or random things seem to happen. It's So for instance, if I press these buttons here, that's just making a noise there. I don't know exactly, I think it's the blue character it's moving, which is player two. So the player one buttons, and moving player two, it doesn't matter which button you press, they all seem to, do this high kick the joysticks don't seem to do anything that one seems to do up and down doesn't go right but it goes back there's a little bit sound but that's on full and if you press the two player button the sound goes off. Same with the one player button. So, <laughs> so it's a bit of a strange one this. So I think the problem is either going to be on the main panel here or on the circuit board inside. Now there's not a lot in this, I'll just show you what's actually in this at the moment. So pretty much in the back of it we have, that's the back of the monitor with the I guess there's a tiny little board or something in here, like a Raspberry Pi type arrangement. And a power lead going into it, and that's pretty much it. I think I say the rest of the cabinet. It's just a big empty box. Right, I think the first thing what we'll do is we'll get the control panel. We'll take that downstairs onto the blue mat. And we'll have a look at it and see if the problem lies there. So the control panel is just held on with this ribbon cable here. So I'll just disconnect that. And now we should be able to take it downstairs onto the blue mat. So the first thing I've noticed is there seems to be some type of liquid or something around about here. So I don't know whether something's been spilt in this. And that speaker cone seems quite solid. I think I'll take that speaker out just to have a quick look at that because see I don't think that's right the way it is and that might explain why the sound volume is really low. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, that speaker, <laughs> that, that speaker cone is actually supposed to move up and down. And it's solid. It's almost like the speaker's burned out. I mean, that's not moving at all, that. I mean, you can see there I'm pressing on it and, and the, the centre cone isn't moving at all. So that may explain the sound not working properly. So I guess that's burned out, that speaker. Yeah, it shouldn't be like that, should it? Right, so that's one problem. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with these controls then. I think I might take this board off here, just so we can get a better look at that. Let's find a smaller screwdriver. That's another screw down there, under the wires. Oh, that looks alright, I can't see any problems there. Let's just zoom down a bit so we can just have a better look. So I guess this is just a big ground plane around the outside. So those must be the grounds. There, they're the grounds for the buttons. And they're the signals from each button going to this ribbon cable here. So that must be for one joystick, and that must be for the other joystick. I've got a couple of switches here. One's the power switch, and one's for selecting the volume level. That's pretty much it. There's not really a lot in this. Let's let's test some of these micro switches on these buttons. I wonder if... I mean, we'll work it out from there anyway. I was going to say, I wonder if there's a pin out of this edge connector. So I've had a look on the internet and I found this diagram of this header connector here. So let's find the ground, which I think is this pin here on the joystick. And we should be to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pins along. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so ground, nothing, ground. So those are right. So that's definitely a ground. So that's the yellow wire. So I'm just going to poke my probe in here, like so. So this side is all the play at two controls. So that one should be down, and it is. That should be up. Yeah. Uh, that one should be right. Left. Then we've got D, E and F, so I'm not sure which buttons they are, that one, that one, and that one, and A, B and C, I think some of the buttons might be a little bit Yeah, some of the buttons aren't great on this, but... Let's be getting anything on that one. Yeah. Right, so all those are connected. I don't think there's any shorts... ...between any of them. Right, okay, so that's player 2 control. Let's check the player 1. So if we do the same sort of thing, and put my probe back in the ground here. And we want... So, let's see if we go down, which should be about here somewhere. Yeah, it's that one. Right, so that's down, up, right, left, I'll try and do the buttons now. Right, so that's A, which is a bit sticky, but it is working. 
B doesn't appear to be working. Yeah, B's not working very well. I'll try that one. Right, that one's working. Yeah, you're getting a little bit of resistance on them when you hit them, they sort of work. I think these buttons are just worn out. It looks like it's had a bit heavy usage. But I can't see anything that would cause the problems that we've got. Let's try the well the power switch ones must be working because it's powering on. We've got the volume switch here. Which I assume is working because it was turning the volume on and off, but obviously the speaker's blown here. And then the other two connections are the speaker. So I don't think the problem's on here, I think it's actually on the circuit board. So I think I'm going to have to go back upstairs, get the circuit board out of the unit and bring it down. We'll have a look at that on the bench next. Right, so let's see how this board comes out then. So I'll unplug the power lead. Looks like the ribbon cable goes inside. Looks like we've got a couple of screws either side here. Right, we've got a earthen cable, or earth strap here, so let's remove that. And it looks like we've got two more connectors, so I guess that one might be power. And this looks like data for the display. Right, so there's the little circuit board there, so we'll get that down on the bench and we'll have a look at it. Right, so that's the circuit board out of the unit there. Let's zoom down a bit. I think I'm probably going to have to bring the microscope in on this one. Right, let's have a look then. So that's where the power comes in. Right, well that doesn't look very healthy, does it? For a start. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more on that. So, that looks like it's been getting quite hot. And whether or not that's got anything to do with the speaker being short, or possibly a short somewhere else, that's what it's kind of looking like. Looks like we've got a 3 amp fuse just here. I can't see a number on that chip. I'll just try and angle it a little bit. I don't think there's any number on that chip. Well, that's a bit unusual. I think I'll just zoom back out a bit. Yeah, there's no number on that chip at all. I mean, there's another chip there which we can make the number of. NS4165, I think that is. I'm not sure what that's for. Unless that could possibly be the amplifier. Because there's a couple of traces going down here. Which look like they might go to these end pins here, which I believe is the speaker. So it could possibly be that. I'm going to inductor up here, zero ohm resistor. And that's the display connector there. Looks like we've got some traces going down into this IC here, which again looks like it's been denumbered. It looks like the signals come down here through a couple of these buffer ICs, I think they are. Don't know what that is. Might have a bit, looks like possibly a little bit corrosion or something there. Let's continue. That looks like a serial A prom, I think. Yeah, 2504. 25040 I think there is and by the look of it that must store the settings for this IC here which I guess is the display driver 
that looks like the back light driver for the display looks like some kind of memory IC probably flash that may be where the actual game stored and looks like we've got some power management here again it's been denumbered but it definitely looks like some kind of power management IC by the inductors around it and now we've got the main processor here again with the number removed and it looks like some kind of RAM chip possibly I'm going to see if I can focus on a bit better but that hasn't got a lot of numbers on it just D forward slash G and that's about it and apart from that there's not really a, a whole lot else on the board so this is where the inputs come from the controllers and it looks like it goes through some resistors looks like pull up resistors possibly and maybe some current limiting resistors and it looks like those come up here to a load of pads there which are then come here go along to these connections which are then I'm going to go into this IC here so I wonder if the shop has had a go at fixing this, couldn't fix it and then just decided to sell it on or if the customer didn't want to pay to get it fixed and they just sold it on. Well, there's definitely something looks a bit amiss with this transistor here. Right, I'll see if I can get the meter in shot and we'll see what that measures I mean could it be we're not getting power to the input pins or something I don't know right, let's have a look here let's get the meter in shot there Is that just a no? It can't just be a diode because it's got all of the legs connected. I think. I mean, it's not shorted, but I'm not getting anything from there unless that's not the base. All right, I'll see if I can look that number up, and we'll see what this is. So it looks like O two seven one. Right, so I've had a look at the SMD databases that I normally use and I can't see, I can't find any component with the markings of 0271 or 0271. I mean there was a couple of ones that were potentially a voltage regulator which kind of fits what this might be but So I don't know, 
but whatever it is, I don't think we're going to find a replacement easily. So I don't think I'm too worried about that at the moment, even though it doesn't look in the best of shape. Right, let's try and have a look at these inputs. So, I think these are the player one controls over here, which are the ones that weren't actually doing anything. So let's take that trace for instance, it goes through a capacitor, which is probably the ground, then to a via, which more than likely goes to that via. All these pins appear to be linked together, so seeing as these pins get grounded to activate them, these are probably pull-up resistors, so 103, 10k, so they're probably 10k pull-ups, then goes Actually, I'm not too sure about that because that one hasn't got a lift. Ah, oh, right, yeah, it goes from that via, right, okay. So that via goes to that pin there. So we'll be getting pulled up to probably 5 volts through this resistor and then current limited through this resistor to the main IC. So I think that's how it works. So. We should have 5 volts on this side, and these ones should be linked to the pins. So let's see if we get continuity. I'll try and zoom out a bit. I might have to refocus slightly. And I'll just get me a little diagram. So the seventh pin in. Are the button pins so one two three four so that one there is one of the button pins let's see right so that pin goes to there So that one. That goes to that one. That goes to there. That goes to there. Looks like that one goes to one of these across here, isn't it? Just had it. That goes to that one. Alright, let's see if those resistors measure okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, those measure alright. Let's try these ones. Let's check these ones. Ten K. That's because I'm touching two of them together there. Ten K. Ten K. So all these resistors seem okay. Let's just try these ones. So these should be 1k resistors. So all them seem alright. Let's try these ones. Yep, all those seem alright. Yep, all those ones seem alright. Let's ch check. 
So the 5 volt should come in here. Let's see if we can pick a 5 volt up somewhere. So that looks like a 5 volt. That could be 3 volt there. Let's just see if we get any continuity from there to here. No. Are we getting continuity from here to here? Yes. So we've got some of that chips here. So I think they look all joined together as well. So we're not getting continuity from there to there. But we are from there to there. Let's just try from there to here. Oh, that's interesting. So that looks like the five volts it goes to these, but not to them. Let's see, there's a via goes from there. There's a via here. Let's see if those are linked across the back. I'll just try and get that in focus a bit. So it looks like it goes from there to there. Yeah, it looks like it goes from there to there. Let's try and focus this in again. But we're definitely not getting any continuity from there to there. But we are from here to there. I mean, that kind of makes sense if we did. If this wasn't getting pulled up. It would think you're pressing all of the buttons and that's kind of the symptoms that we've got i want to try soldering a wire from there to there i'll just get some of this kind of wire all right where's my solder there it is i'm just going to turn this board around because it's easier to work on instead of us being It looks like it might be a little bit damaged or something just here. Next to where that via is. Now it doesn't matter about these pins because they're all linked together in any way. So that's solid on there. I'm just going to grab me tweezers. I'm going to add a bit of flux to that. Alright, well. Not the neatest, but it's made contact. Let's just double check that we'll get continuity from here to there now. And we do. Right, I'm just going to give this a little bit of a clean up with some IP here. Right, we'll go give it a test. I'm going to screw it all back in. I'm just going to connect it up. Like that. Right, I'm just going to see if I can find a little speaker that we can just rig up as well, just to see if we get the sound. Right, so I'm back with a, a headphone speaker because it's the only speaker I could find lying around. So I've just soldered that onto the wires. So I'll install that on the control panel. I think I'll just plug some power into this for now. 
around this side. Let's connect this speaker up. I'm just going to leave it hanging out the front there. Alright, see if it does anything now then. Well, that was interesting. It didn't come up with the fail message or the error message or the test menu thing like it was coming up with before. Now, yeah, let's move it back a little bit. Let's see if anything works now. Yes, I think that's it. So, I guess there was a vi I think there's been a short on this control panel. And it's caused the... I don't know how that's happened though. That's a bit weird. Unless it's something to do with a speaker or that's... Blown, a half-blown transistor. But something's caused that via to fail, I think. Or unless something's caused that via to fail and that's what's heated up the transistor, I'm not too sure. But the joystick's moving up and down now. Does this one... Right, press A to select a game, so I think this is probably the A button. Press one to continue, which is that one. Well, the colours have gone a bit weird there. Yeah, I think some of these buttons could do were replaced. There's a lot of wear on this control panel. So volume off, half and full isn't quite working. And here a crackling of it there, so let's just try some of these buttons. So back, up, down, yeah it's like that button isn't doing anything, that one is, that one is, that one is, that one is, player 2 button's working, joystick's working okay. I just think some of the buttons are just worn out now as well, so I think you could probably do with some of these buttons being replaced. Let's just uh, check uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that one's working intermittently, so is that one. That one. That one, that one. Yeah, that one is, but you've really got to bash it. Uh, so I think just the buttons are worn out on this now, but there was definitely a fault with the circuit board as well. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is see if I can obtain some new buttons for it, and then we'll take it from there. So it's been a couple of days and I've had a bit of a rethink on this one. So I've ordered the buttons, which are here, but I've also ordered some speakers, a little amplifier here. I'm going to use an ATX power supply, which I had lying around. I'm just getting a hold of this, which is a TV encoder board. I already had this, which is a Raspberry Pi computer. And we've got a couple of leads here. So what my plan is, I'm going to... Because I'll probably get bored with this fairly easily, I think, because it's only got three games on it. But with this, if I put this in it, I can have thousands of games on it. So I can put loads of arcade games on, I can put PlayStation games on, I can put Super Nintendo games on. So that's my plan. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this control panel down onto the blue mat, put the new controls in. And the reason why I thought I'd go with the ATX power supply, it's probably a bit overkill, but I can utilise the on and off switch here to switch the power supply on and off and it'll give us the 12 volts that I need for the monitor and also the 5 volts I need for the Raspberry Pi. Right, so let's get on with it. 
So the first thing I want to do is remove all of the old joysticks and the old buttons. So we'll start by doing that. Now these joysticks have got glue in the screws, so I might have a bit of trouble getting these out. Right, so we need to remove the ball of the joystick. Which I think is glued on. So it looks like there's two circlips yet. That we should be to remove. And then I'm not sure if the whole joystick should be pulled through. Like that. I'll do the same with the other one. It's like one of them kids toys. I what they call like jumping jacks. Right, let's get this other joystick off then. Right, on to the next bit. So I'm just going to use some of this Brasso just to remove the remains of the old decals here because I mean they're all worn off in any way and I think it'll just look better just being all black so let's have a go at that well I think that looks a lot better the next thing I need to do is drill a hole here for a button and a hole here for a button because I need some buttons for one and two player start and one and two player coins because some of the arcade games you actually have to simulate a coin being put in it so I'm going to put an extra button here and an extra button there next to the one and two player start so I might have those ones as the coin one and one and two and player one start and player two start so I think that's the way I'm going to do it so just been over the workshop and drilled two holes in the panel here so we've got an extra two holes for the other buttons all right let's start putting some buttons in them this may take a little while so there's all of the one player buttons installed and the one player starting coin i'll just do the two player and then we'll fit the joysticks all right the last one Now these other ones turn, but that one doesn't seem to be on to do. I shall pop that out and sort that out. Right, let's fit the joysticks. So I've already marked on these which way they go. That's up, down, left and right. And you can just unscrew the tops of these. And that's what you're supposed to do on the other ones, but I think they must have glued them on. Just got a little bit of plastic out of the way. So just be a matter of just screwing these in. Looks like they might be a slightly different size to the other ones, or the whole spacing. Let's have to make sure we get them centred. Let's start by the centre two screws first. Let's just see if that's centred. Yeah, that'll do. I might have to make some new holes for these ones. Right, it has pulled it slightly off centre, but that'll still work fine. I don't make that much difference. Right, then we we'll just need to tighten that up. I'll just a screwdriver and the little slot here if I can find one that's small enough that's it that's starting to take shape right we'll get the other joystick in and there's the other joystick fitted now one thing I forgot to mention was these are LED buttons so they all light up when it's plugged in so let's have a look how we're going to tackle this bit next so what this board is, is a 
USB encoder and what happens is all of the switches and joysticks plug into this and are converted into a USB signal so what you could do if you wanted to use just this panel on a PC for instance and you didn't want to have a, an arcade cabinet you could just buy a, a piece of wood drill all the holes in it like this put your joysticks in connect this connect the buttons up to this and then plug that into your PC and you'd have a double arcade joystick that you could operate your PC with and then you could just run the emulators and stuff on your PC so yeah, that's another bit of an alternative so what we need to do is mount that somewhere down here a bit out of the way plug all the joysticks and buttons into it and then the USB will just go into the Raspberry Pi so I've just been to get a couple of screws just to mount one of these boards now you'll need a board for each joystick because effectively the two separate joysticks and I was just looking at the USB lead because if let's say I mount it like that the USB leads going to stick out too far and we're not going to be to get the control panel to sit in place so I'm probably going to have to mount it somewhere like that so then there's enough space for the cable to go underneath and get past where the monitor is so I think that's probably where I'm going to have to mount it so I've got a little brad hole here I'll just make a hole just there and we'll get one screw in like so and we'll do the same about here right so the joystick we'll plug that in first and that just plugs in at the bottom of the board here like so and then we've got the buttons now depending on which order you want the buttons in I mean I think I want this button as number one so I'll plug it in the first slot here and then I want the next green button along as my number two button which is here so we'll plug that one in and I want my blue button here as the third one Get the wires untangled that is. The fourth button, I want my red button on the bottom row. So we'll plug that one in. Fifth, I want the green one. And number six, I want this blue one. And then I think I want the start button, which is just here. So I'll be one player start. And then the coin button. So that should be all of that control panel, or that side of it, wired up. And I need to do the same on the other side now. Right, so that's all that side done. So I think I'll get the laptop now. We'll plug it into the laptop and I'll run something like joystick test or whatever and we'll just check out all those buttons and joysticks work. Right, so I've got the laptop now. I'll just plug this in. And this came up as a generic joystick. So let's see what it does. Let's see if it works. Yes. Down. Yes. Left. And right. Yeah, so left and right, up and down, so they're all working. Button one, yeah, button two, button three. Right, so all those are working. And those two. Right, let's try the other side then. So I'll just unplug this. Plug the other one in. see if the same thing happens here and so up down left right yeah 
Excellent. Right, let's have a look at the next part of the project then. So the next part of the puzzle is this. And what this is is a universal TV board or LCD driver if you prefer. It takes a 12 volt input. You can put VGA or HDMI or even composite video in. It does take an analog TV signal. And also you can actually play movies via the USB connector here. So what we need to do for this is check that the voltage is set right. I'll just zoom down a bit so you can see here. So what we need to do is look at the specs of the panel on the arcade game. And I've already done that and it's 5 volts. So it means the jumper needs to be in the centre position here. Which it is. If it was a 3 volt panel we'd put the jumper at the top. And if it was a 12 volt panel this is the signals that it needs to take in. You would then set it to the bottom jumper. So the power comes in here. This connector here goes to the backlight on the panel. Or if it's a cath uh, cold cathode one, it goes to the inverter. And this connector here goes to the low voltage differential signaling connector or LVDS connector on the display and that's what actually generates the picture. It also has a audio output here but I'm not going to use that I'm going to use a 3.5 millimeter jack plug and an external amplifier which is a little bit bigger than this thing. Right, the only thing that we need to do because this is a universal board we need to program it with the firmware for different resolutions and the screen in the arcade game upstairs is 1280 by 1024 if I remember right so I found some firmware it was a little bit of a struggle finding one that would actually work but I'll leave some links in the video description pop it on the USB stick plug it in hopefully the light here should start flashing and when it stops flashing that's it it's programmed with the correct firmware and that's pretty much it. There's also a menu that you can bring up, which is like an engineering menu. And I think that's menu, and then press 1147. And that brings up the engineering menu where you can alter some settings, whether the panel's 8 bit or 6 bit. And you can adjust things like the backlight and other settings that you're not normally supposed to. So. Yeah, I think it's quite a little interesting board. Even if you've got an old laptop screen lying around, you could potentially repurpose it into a monitor with one of these boards, which I might actually do for when I'm recording videos. I've only got one screen, and sometimes when I'm recording stuff, I've got the microscope on that screen, and I can't see what's going on in the other camera. So, yeah, it might come in handy, that. So I might actually purchase another one of these. I think it's quite a little neat board. I'll leave links for these in the video description. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is plug a little keypad in, which just goes into this connector here. Like so. Next thing, I'm going to unplug the backlight, which is going to this red connector here. And then unplug the signals, which is the LVDS cable here. So that's the original Street Fighter board. And this is the TV board. So, take note the little dot goes to the side where the capacitors are. So, like that. Right, I think that's pretty much it. We'll just use the original power supply because it's 12 volt in any way. We'll just plug that in. And we've got a little red light on there. Right, so it's just gone to blue. Let's see what we get on the screen. And we've got a nice blue screen. Seeing no signal there. Right, I'll just go and grab the remote. So if I press menu now on the remote control, we're presented with a menu. So I'll just exit that a second. Menu. 1147. And then we're presented with the factory settings. And we should be to go down to things like panel setting. 
I'll just go up one here and press right and there we can alter things like the depth of the panel that I was talking about so we can change that from 6 bit to 8 bit so if this was a 6 bit panel you would change that to 6 bit instead of 8 but this is an 8 bit panel and that's the version of the firmware that I flashed I had to change the file name and put the O the 03C in it before it would flash so the original file name was UTS6710-100.bin and I had to put the dash 03C in it for it to actually take the firmware right, I think the next thing I'll do is do the speakers here so I've got this little amplifier and a couple of car speakers that I bought off Amazon for £15 so what I'm planning on doing with those is on the top of the machine here cutting a hole here and a hole there and mounting the two speakers in there and there so that's my plan so I'm going to remove that top part take it over the workshop cut some holes in it and then we'll continue from there so that's the top panel of the machine that I've removed and drilled some holes and put some speakers in there and I've also drilled a hole for the volume control on the amplifier so I turned this board upside down because I tried removing the label I couldn't get it off and I thought oh, I'll just put the board on the other way the speakers I've moved further to the back because the screen comes to about here and I didn't want the speakers to be too close to the screen just in case I caught the screen with it so that's why they're a bit further back so this is the amplifier board I'm going to use and what we've got I'll just zoom down a bit so you can have a look it takes a 12 volt input which just goes in here this goes to one speaker this goes to the other speaker and then we just use something like a 3.5mm jack plug to feed the audio in and control the volume with the volume pot here and that's pretty much it so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to I was going to use the wires that came with the speakers but they're actually that thin I thought, hmm, I'll not bother using that, so I'm just going to use some, I think it's 0.75 mains cable, just to do the job. Now I'm just going to solder the wire straight on. I have got some spade connectors somewhere, but I'm just not going to bother. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is solder some wires onto these speakers, I think. I might as well do the other one as well. So there's our speaker wires on. And I've got a bit of mains cable that I'm just going to use for the 12 volt power input. That will go to the ATX power supply. And I think the sample fire board was about £5. I bought it some time ago but I have seen them again on eBay. I'll put a link, a link to that in the video description as well. So the next thing we need to do is just pop that in that hole, put the nut on it, and the washer, and then the volume knob. And I think that's another part done. Right, I'll just tighten that up. should do and then we'll just stick the little volume control on and there we go right on to the next part so this is the ATX power supply I'm going to use I had this lying around already so I thought well why not use it hello Kiwi one of our cats has just decided to appear there inquisitive so I've used the power this is the power on wires which is this green one here and it, when it's earthed or grounded that switches the power supply on so I've just run those wires up to the to the on off switch on the control panel 
So what I'm going to use is just the hard drive connectors here. And I've made this little adapter from an old, I think it was a hard drive adapter or something. And what that does is I've running these two wires up to the audio amp with an inline fuse and the five volt wires here i'm just running to an old usb socket here that i pulled off an old circuit board and i'll plug the raspberry pi into that so that'll give the five volts to the raspberry pi and the 12 volts to the audio amp i've also made this little adapter here which will plug into the tv board and that will plug into the 12 volt from the power supply and I've just put a little inline fuse in that as well just in case the Raspberry Pi I've already loaded an SD card which I've configured and downloaded all the ROMs I'll leave some links or something in the description that'll tell you where to get those if you're interested and we've just got a little USB cable there so I'm going to mount the Raspberry Pi up here just on a couple of cable ties so that'll just be out the way up there and I've already mounted the TV board and the control panel board just on the side there right so let's start plugging things in then so this is the player one controls so I'm just going to plug into the USB port there. Right, it's player 2 plugged in. Almost. Right, we need the audio plugged in. Which goes to a little amp board there. Like so. We need the HDMI lead plugged in from the monitor. So that one, and I think that's about it for the Raspberry Pi side of things. Just the power supply wires now. So we have this one powering the audio amp. This just goes into here, like that. That one for the Raspberry Pi for its power and then we need the monitor power one so I'll just plug that into the monitor board up here like so and then the other end I'll just plug into one of these other connectors here And that should be pretty much it. Right, I think the next thing we need to do is test it. So I've powered it on, but I don't know if you can hear. I seem to have a lot of noise coming from the speaker, so I think I'm gonna have to add some filtering onto the power side of the amplifier. So I'm just gonna see what I can sort out for that, and then I'll be back. So to combat the noise problem, which was coming from the switch mode power supply, I've just made this little power filter here, just out of a couple of inductors that I pulled off an old TV board and a capacitor there, so I think that should do the job. Right, so this is it, all finished. And see, I've got the back on. All nice and neat. We've got the speakers with the volume control on the top there. Right, let's fire it up and see what it does. And I've set the TV to automatically come on when it's when the power's applied, so it should just boot up there. It might take a couple of moments. The control panel's all nicely lit up as well. There's quite a few games on here, as you can see. I 
Asteroids, that's a classic. We'll try that one, yeah? Right, that one seems to work, and if we want to exit that, we'll just hit these two buttons here. And we're back to the menu, so let's pick something else. How about the old Space Invaders? And I'll give a shout out to George, my former business partner, who normally comes up at Christmas time to see you. And he's going to love this, because he loves all these old games. So, hiya George, hiya Leslie. Alright, let's put a credit in and see what this one does. Right, so that seems to work fine. Let's try something else then. Pac-Man. Donkey Kong. So let's check that player 2 controls are working as well. I think I might have one of the buttons plugged in the wrong hole on this one. Yeah, I think I've got a couple of the buttons wrong the wrong way on this. Either that or they mightn't be configured properly in the software. That's probably where it is. So I'll probably have to reconfigure some of those buttons in the software, but that's fairly easy to do, so. Right, so I think that's pretty awesome now, and also along with the arcade emulators, we've got Super Nintendo, we've got Nintendo, Mega Drive, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Game Gear, so loads more games to choose from, and they've still got the original Street Fighter games on there as well, so I think it's uh, pretty awesome now if I do say so myself. Right then, well if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions please leave it in the comments section below and as always have a great day thanks for watching